Hello, I'm going to show um, how I fitted uh, a digital readout to my Tom Senior Mill. I've chose uh, EMSI um, to supply the equipment. I used them before for my Harrison M300 and it's a brilliant bit of kit. So I thought I'd go through how, it's, uh, how I'm going to fit it. It is their new um, LCD display uh, and once I've got it fitted I'll show you all the features um, that it's got. This is the Tom Senior that I'm going to fit it to. It's actually um, a 1949 machine. Um, it's got the optional uh, S head on it, and um, as well as the knuckle head, it's complete with slotting head and also a rotary table and Tom Senior dividing head. Uh, it was supplied to a school in York in 1949. Um, and it lived there till about seven years ago when the school closed and I bought it uh, at that point. I fully refurbished it um, because it was in quite a bad way and I decided I'd like to fit um, DRO to it because I've got quite a lot of PCD work to do c coming up. Um, I've gone for a three axis option because uh, um, and I'm going, cause I do a lot of gear cutting and because, because of that I'm actually going to put the third axis onto the knee uh, rather than onto the quill um, because then when I'm in gear cutting mode I'm in horizontal mode um, and I can uh, use it to get the depth of cut. thought I'd start with an easy job and the first job I'm going to do is to mount the, uh, the head and um, I've decided I'm going to put it uh, in this sort of area here so it'll swing out and I can read the um, display from this side. Uh, I did try various other positions but then it blocks the control gear for the for the um, inverter and um, can't really use the other side um, because the, the access door is in the way. So here's the head mounted on the side of the uh, um, Tom Senior. Uh, swinging arm lets me Let's me move it out of the way. I can swing it round. I can swing it round there, so when I'm not using the machine, it's not going to get damaged. It's it's compact, and then I just matter of swinging it back out again to that position when I want to use it. So I think that'll be fine. For those of you who know anything about Tom Seniors, you'll know that one of the disadvantages is the to travel. Um, knee height is a particular problem but it's much better with the um, the S head on it and I've actually got a plate um, to raise the head and the S head up another six inches if I need to. Um, but I didn't want to lose any uh, travel in the uh, X direction um, so uh, fitting a glass scale either meant putting it onto the front of the machine but if you look at the front of the machine it's really quite crowded because it's got the um, slides uh, for the automatic stop for the table travel and it's got the lock the table lock um, and the controls for the automatic feed so putting it on the front um, really not an option uh, well it's not an easy option so putting it on the back if I use a conventional glass scale I would have lost um, quite a lot of movement in that direction and you can see it's quite small so having talked to um, Dr. Mark Hudman at EMSI, um, he suggested that we go for magnetic scales um, and uh, this is a magnetic scale. It's a stainless, it's a magnetic backing uh, with a stainless steel cover on the front um, and it just glues on. It's got double sided tape, 3M double sided tape on the back and I can just put it onto the back of the, uh, the table like so can't really see there, can you see that? It's going to go onto there. Um, and I'm only going to lose two mil travel. So that's the option I've gone for. Um, they, ha they, they come complete with uh, scale uh, with spars, and you can there's a groove machined in there, so you can actually uh, glue the scale into there if you want. But I, again, I don't really want to do that. I don't want to lose the, the, the movement. I may use those on the other axes, but for the moment on the, on the table, I'm not going to. 
Uh, and the other suggestion is, is I can actually machine a groove down the back of the of the table to let that in flush. But I'm not going to, if I'm desperate for two millimetres, I think there's other solutions um, better, uh, easier than that. Anyway, so that's the next job. It's in these slides. Watch this space. Uh, the DRO comes with a rev counter, and here's the brackets I've got made to hold the sensor. Here's the magnetic strip and the stainless steel cover strip fastened to the table. Because the column is not uh, hasn't got a machine surface on it, I've had to make aluminium brackets with jacking screws to level up the scale, the spar, uh, which you can now see I've fitted uh, to the column, and then I made up a, a series of brackets to hold the reed head onto the uh, uh, onto the knee, and here you can see me clocking up the the spar to make sure it's uh, parallel in all directions to the movement and there's the head mounted to the knee and you can see the green lathe is on on the reed head that means it's all working fine and there we are we have the reed out working in all three axes Thank you for watching. In the next part, I'll show you how to use the PCD function on the display.